Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello. Welcome to the program. Today I want to talk about a subject that affects many, many people. Many people are haunted by loss. Christians are haunted by loss, and it becomes a huge stumbling block. They just cannot get past it. They dwell upon what should have been, what could have been, what did happen, what didn't happen. Uh, they allow the past in the sense of loss to become this huge stumbling block that prevents them from receiving their blessings. You may be in that place right now. Don't let past tragedies, past disasters even, rule your life. Don't be held hostage to your emotions. Now, if you will pay attention, and if you get this set of teachings that I will offer to you later, you will learn how to get past this. I will be able to teach you how to get past loss, grief over past tragedies. Things happen in this earth. Terrible things sometimes happen. Loss of, of people you love, horrible situations, loss of property, storms, whatever it may be. And you must know how to get past these things. And if you don't, then you are held hostage by your emotions, and these tragic events will define the rest of your life. I know so many Christians, Christians, who never get past, never get past the loss of a child, whether it's a miscarriage or an accident or a disease, whatever it may be that they didn't overcome, they never get past it, or a loss of a business or a bankruptcy, or a foreclosure on their house, or whatever it may be. But you can, and you must, get past these things. Um, even if they were caused by a mistake that you made, even if they were caused by a bad judgment call, it doesn't matter. Number one for you to understand is that our mistakes, our blunders even, our disasters, whether thrust upon us or of our own making, shape us. You and I are shaped by our journey. If we never made mistakes, if we never had horrible things happen to us, then we would have nothing to overcome. And it's the very overcoming of these things God's way. See, we can't overcome these things in our own strength, in our own flesh. We just aren't capable of it. But when we learn how to be delivered from these spirits, these demons that get a hold of us through these situations, grief and despair and guilt, oh my goodness, guilt just destroys people. When they learn how to get delivered from these things, which you can, then they can move forward. But when we don't, we're held by these things. That's why I call it being held hostage by our emotions. Because every time we start to move forward, if that's the case, you will find that these things will just rise up in front of your face and will convince you that you're never going to have any success. You're never going to be able to have the things, the blessings, the, the abundance that other people have. So until you realize that it doesn't matter. See, now you're saying right now, oh yeah, it does matter. It matters to me. But that's the point. It has to stop mattering to you. That's why it's a stumbling block, because it gets in the way and you stumble over it. Every time you begin to move into blessing, this thing just throws itself in front of you 
and steals your faith. It steals your joy. It steals your peace. It steals every good thing God wants for you. And so we must not, you must not be held hostage by your emotions. And it doesn't matter if people stole from you. It doesn't matter. Oh, I know it hurt. And I understand. I've been there, done that. And we have to get past it. And when you do, oh, what a relief. And it feels so wonderful. The Lord talks a lot about this. And the second thing that you need to understand before I read this scripture to you is, number one, is that our blunders, our mistakes, the things that are horrible that happen to us, shape us and make us who we are. And number two, it doesn't matter because there's no, now get this, there's no such thing as loss in the kingdom of God. You can't lose if you stay in the kingdom. No matter what the devil has stolen from you, no matter how horrible things have been, no matter how much has been ripped away from you, God is a God of restoration. And he doesn't just restore in the sense of giving back just what you lost. He gives it back to you multiplied. But you have to know how to tap into this. You can't just say, oh, well, I, I want that. That's fine. I'll take that. You have to know how to grab hold of it and appropriate it. In Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, the word says, do not remember the former things. Just put them out of mind. Nor consider the things of old. Don't even consider them. They happened. They were good. They were bad. They should have been better. They, they shouldn't have been what they were. Absolutely. The world is not a fair place. There's no justice in the world, but there is in the kingdom of God. So he says, don't even consider the things of old. They're past. They're done. You can't change them. Yes, you can learn from them from the respect of not repeating old mistakes, but that's the only value they have. Wanting to change the past means you want to change who you are now because we are the sum of our experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So he says, don't even consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. You see, God's always doing a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Well, if you're allowing this stumbling block of the past uh, in the sense of tragedies and miseries and loss and grief and horror to constantly be in front of you. You're going to stumble over that. You're not going to see the new thing God wants to do. You're not going to be able to receive it. You will not know it. And that's what God wants you to understand. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He will make a way where there is no way. Loss does not apply to you if you are in the kingdom of God. Grief and loss was in the curse, the curse of the law from which we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. It was dealt with. If you look at Deuteronomy 28, particularly verses 32 and 65, you will see that grief and loss was in the curse from which you have been redeemed. You don't have to see it the way the devil wants you to see it. You see it as something you move past. Yeah, it was nasty when it happened. Yes, it was horrible. Yes, it caused a lot of pain. But today is a new day. Today is a new day. And you choose to move on. And when you do, then the past can't hurt you, no matter how horrible the circumstances were. They can't hurt you. No matter how deep your guilt was about your part in certain things, it can't hurt you because you're free of it. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And every loss 
will be redeemed and your abundance will increase if you do it God's way. In Nehemiah 8, 10 and 11, he says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. In other words, you're going to have an, such an abundance that you can help others overcome their mess too. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow. It's not a suggestion. Do not sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The minute we start giving in to grief and sorrow and guilt and despair, we're just weakened to the point where we can't even find faith. And that's just what the devil wants. This is his turf not God's. So the Levites quieted all the people saying, be still for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. Do not be grieved. The Lord says that you mustn't be grieved. In 2 Corinthians 7.10, the word says, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Godly sorrow. There is a godly sorrow a sorrow of having not walked with the Lord, having been part of the world, which leads to repentance and begins salvation, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. But the sorrow of the world produces death. And someone who is constantly wallowing around in guilt and grief and despair dies a little every minute. It produces death. Years ago, um, before I went into ministry, when we were first in our early walk with the Lord, um, we were quite wealthy. And my husband believed that God had directed him into an investment. And it was our principal investment. Um, it was huge. And he really believed that God had directed him into it. And so um, he proceeded accordingly. And the investment failed. First of all, you never assume, never assume if it's something you want to do. And he wanted to make this investment. Um, he thought it was a good thing. And so he thought he heard God say to do it. So never assume. Always test things. We learned that. But the investment failed, and we lost everything, everything. And we were in a world of confusion because we had no one to teach us what this was all about, to explain the kingdom to us, to give us the word. And so we just didn't know what to think. And he experienced tremendous guilt and grief. Um, we had some tough years not just a few weeks or months. We had some tough years. We both went to work as stable hands because that was the only thing we could find. Um, we knew horses, but we didn't have the credentials to be hired to do anything important with horses. So we were stable hands. Now, it's not the end of the world. But because of it, um, our younger son wound up being a latchkey kid and got into all kinds of trouble. And I had guilt coming out my pores because of that. And Jeremy was haunted by this loss. He felt tremendously guilty that he had been responsible for making the decisions, etc. Well, when we finally got to the point where we began digging into the Word and learned what this was really all about, and got delivered, and Jeremy got delivered from the guilt and the grief and all of it and stopped being haunted by it and stopped belittling himself because of it and gave it all to God, we began to prosper. And you see, this is the point. We didn't, begin, we didn't get back to prospering. We didn't uh, get past this. We didn't get into increase until he was delivered from this because he was condemning himself. 
And in Christ there is no condemnation. None. In the flesh, yes, but in the spirit, no. And so he was delivered from this and learned how to do it God's way. We both did. And that's when the restoration began. And that's when he found peace again and joy again. And everything started going the right direction. And he's no longer haunted by that. It's a fact. It happened. But it was part of the journey. And you see, now when we mention it, I'm talking about it now, there's no pain attached to it. There's no grief. There's no guilt. It was part of our journey. Not a part we particularly liked. Don't misunderstand me. It was a little bit shocking to go from wealth to poverty. And we're not talking just poverty, you know, because uh, it was on paper. We're talking about believing God for the next meal. Real poverty. And so now I look at it and say, Lord, you know, it was part of the journey. Yes, Satan did that. Yes, absolutely, Satan stole the money. No question. Not even a, a confusion about that. But when we finally, and we had a tough time because we kept trying to figure it out our way. We kept trying to figure out why it happened and what happened. But when we finally got it in perspective, and this is what I want to teach you in, in these uh, six teachings, how to get past these stumbling blocks, how to prevent the devil from making these things into permanent stumbling blocks. Yeah, we fight our way through them. No, they're not pleasant when they're happening, but they're part of the journey. So they shape us, and they also teach us that God is a God of restoration and that there is no such thing as loss in the kingdom of God. If you do it God's way, there's restoration and there's increase. And sorrow is meant for the wicked. See, sorrow is destruction, and it is meant for the wicked. In Psalm 107, there are many such passages in the Word, but I want to read this one to you. When they, meaning the wicked, are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. They're brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He, God, pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Now, we just read in Isaiah 43 that he makes a way, a road in the wilderness for the righteous. He makes rivers in the desert. And I will tell you that you can come through the most horrible of tragedies. And even if it's haunted you for years, you can ball that all up in a little bundle and you can throw it right back to the pit of hell and you can get past it. And you don't have to be held hostage by your emotions, by this sense of, of loss and guilt and grief and condemnation. All of that comes from the enemy. And this series is called Stumbling Blocks because there are many such things that the enemy turns into stumbling blocks. And we can't allow that to happen. We need every potential stumbling block to become a stepping stone, to step above it and beyond it to greater things and greater blessing. We have to have every opposition become an opportunity to overcome. That's why in James the word says to count it all joy when you fall into various trials. No, the trials are not joyful. I'm never going to tell you that. I've been through a lot of them, and when one's going through them, they're not joyful. But if you know God, really know him, I don't mean religiously, I mean really know him, then you will know that you're going to come through this. And that's what we have learned. And everybody who listens to what God taught me as I teach them learns that when you come through these things, you come through stronger and you come through better. 
And as they shape you, they cause you to be transformed. And so that's why the Lord says to count it joy. Yes, the trial is miserable. Things you've gone through may be tragic and horrible, but they don't have to mark your life. You're, you have the ability in Christ to come through these things, to come out the other side. You know, all of the cliches, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but there really is if you're in Christ. There really is. And that light is the truth. And every loss will be redeemed. Every tragedy will be redeemed if you give it to God. And that's why I want you to get these tapes. They're called stumbling blocks. And I go, in this series of teachings, I go through a whole list of things that can become stumbling blocks in Christians' lives. And the faster we identify these things and learn how to deal, them, deal with them and kick them out of our way, just boot them right back to the pit, the better we are going to do and the more we're going to be able to operate within the power and glory of the kingdom and appropriate healing and finances and peace and joy and restoration of all things. But God can't restore you until you give it to him. And that's what I wanted to do. I know that sounds very simple, give it to him. Oh, yeah, right. How am I supposed to do that? But you can. You can, and I can teach you how. And you can have a life that is free of grief, free of guilt, free of all of the things that the enemy tries to just drag us down with. Sorrow is meant for the wicked to destroy them, to destroy them. But if you accept it, it will destroy you. So get these teachings. Get them and learn not only how to stop being haunted by loss, but how to get past all of the basic stumbling blocks of the kingdom because they can become stepping stones. And you can use what the devil intended for, for destruction to God's glory and to your glory and your joy. So don't pass up this opportunity. Your life can be one of light and happiness and joy, free of the past. Singing the blues is not an option for a Christian. I know in the world when things aren't going well or when someone's feeling kind of maudlin or sad and they're thinking about the past, they, they like to put on blues music or go somewhere where somebody's singing the blues and the expression is misery loves company. Trouble is, that only causes more misery. That doesn't make you feel better. That doesn't give you joy. That's not God's way. If you sing the blues, you're going to stay blue. You're going to stay down. And if you do it long enough, the spirit of depression is going to get a hold of you and that's a whole nother thing. No, there is, and, and this is the thing that it's so hard for so many Christians to get a hold of. But if you have ears to hear, you can do it. There is no such thing as loss in the kingdom. I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care how large the perception of loss is before you. If you do it God's way, he will restore everything and give you a humongous increase. That's why I say there is no such thing as loss. Sure, we've all lost things in the worldly sense. When we had our investments go bad and lost all of our money, and I lost a lot more because my son got into lots of trouble, and you know about it if you've listened, and he got rebellious and he got angry because of our going from abundance to poverty. And he blamed us and he blamed God and he got mad and he joined the gangs and he did all kinds of stuff. 
but he is an awesome man of God today because God is a God of restoration. He is now a force in our church. He's 31 years old, and he is the most wonderful, loving, marvelous man of God you could imagine. Well, that didn't happen because we tried to do it the world's way. That didn't happen because we just wallowed in misery and guilt and condemnation and everything else and blamed everyone, which usually, as I listen to people, winds up with those who blame themselves, blame situations, they wind up blaming God. He's the one who can fix it. He's not your problem. So wrong thinking about this steals more than just joy. It steals everything. And so as you move on and learn how, learn how to let go of these things, no matter how horrific they were, then you will turn these stumbling blocks into stepping stones to blessing. And you will turn these obstacles into opportunities for triumph. And you will be a person who is whole, who is happy. You will no longer be haunted by loss and regret. And just like my husband, there will be no pain anymore. There will be no anguish anymore. It's just something that happened. And we moved on. And we're better now than we ever have been. We're more blessed now than we ever have been. We have more joy than we ever have had because we did it God's way. See, that's what I want for you. We could have become bitter and angry, and it could have torn our marriage apart. It could have torn the rest of our lives apart if we had let it. But praise the Lord, he showed us a different way. He showed us his way. And that's what I want you to learn. You don't have to be defined by tragedies, no matter how horrible they were, no matter how devastated you were. That can be just something that happened in the past when you learn how to give it to God. And he'll take it. And he'll take it, and he'll bring you back up out of that despair, and he'll put you on the mountaintop. And if you let him, he'll keep you there all the way to the glorification. This is something that every Christian needs. So don't miss out today. Learn how to get past the stumbling blocks. I will see you next time. Meanwhile, remember, you shall know the truth. And it's the truth that will make you absolutely free. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's Word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us. Or to order materials or to make a gift by phone, you can by calling the phone number on the screen.